friends today we are going to discuss hypernatremic dehydration as we all know hypernatremic dehydration is a very important topic that we should know in our daily life practice because uh, we will be seeing many patients will be admitting to our pacu or nacu with hypovolemic hypernatremia that is more commonly seen so here we are going to discuss the topic hypernatremic dehydration in that hypovolemic hypernatremia person so hypernatremic dehydration can be divided into hypovolemic hypervolemic and euvolemic in a cell there are uh, compartments like intracellular compartment and extracellular compartment intracellular compartment containing 30 to 40 percentage and extracellular compartment is 15 to 20 to 25 percentage in that interstitial and plasma will be there so in plasma uh, we can see the cation sodium and in the cell we can see potassium so this all the basic things we should be knowing so hypernatremia can be euvolemic, hypervolemic and hypovolemic. So in hypovolemic hypernatremia what will be happening is there will be loss of the sodium and the loss of the water. But the loss of the uh, water is more compared to the loss of the sodium. So this is a very important. And uh, in euvolemic hypernatremia what happens is the sodium content will be increasing while total body water remains near normal. In hypervolemia, what happens is the sodium content is also increasing while total body water remains the same or increases. So, in hypervolemic hypernatremia, what happens is there will be loss of the water and loss of the sodium. But loss of the water is more compared to the loss of the sodium. So, here uh, we can see that there is loss of the water and loss of the sodium is also there. But loss of the water loss is more compared to the sodium loss. So, we are going to discuss the topic hypovolemic hypernatremia per se. So this is a cell. There will be intracellular compartment and extracellular compartment. In this intracellular compartment, extracellular compartment, there in extracellular compartment there is some loss. So what happens? The, the extracellular compartment shrinks. So in extracellular compartment there is loss of the sodium and the loss of the water is there. So here we can see that uh, this is a loss of the sodium plus water that is solute deficit is there but there is also excess water loss that is hypovolemic means excess water loss that water loss is free water that is only water that water is devoid of the any electrolytes or sodium so this is the free water deficit so uh, the loss is we can divide into two that is one is solute deficit and another is free water deficit so what happens uh, the intracellular compartment also thinks that oh there is a hypernatremia is there we should give some fluid so what happens there will be shift of the fluids so in invariably the intras, intracellular fluid is also decreases so what will we get we will get a duffy skin of duffy skin appearance okay now so uh, there will be isotonic loss plus free water loss that we have discussed this is the total deficit the total fluid deficit is what isotonic loss that isotonic loss that is solute deficit plus free water loss these all things will be lost so uh, when giving the correction there are principles that has to be taken care of that is uh, if the child is presenting in shock we have to resuscitate the child first how we are going to resuscitate suppose if a child with 10 kg and uh, uh, the sodium content of the body is 190 uh, so what happens we will give invariably when a child coming to the PACU or NICU with a shock, we will be we will have a tendency to give NS normally. So NS contains sodium 154. So there is a so much difference between 154 and 190. So what will be happening? There should not be a difference of 15 millivolt between the resuscitation fluid and the sodium content of the baby. So we cannot give. So at that time, what we have to do is we have to resuscitate with a fluid that is containing three percentage saline okay now so this is the first principle that is shock correction then the other thing is what all things we have to correct we have to correct the lost fluid that is the total deficit so total deficit containing what all things free water deficit and the solute fluid deficit so free water correction we have to give solute fluid or sodium deficit we have to give and replace the ongoing losses and maintenance fluid also we have to give these are other principles so in shock correction there is a resuscitation phase so as we have discussed the regular isotonic fluid is too hypotonic for the child it should not be given it should not have sodium concentration more than 50 milliequivalent below the child's value 
so what we can do we can add 3 plus 9 is to increase the sodium content of the fluid so uh, here we can take the sodium content of the child is 190 hmm. so uh, what we have to give so there is one equation that we can use that is the amount of the 3 plus is allowed to be added in resuscitation fluid so here uh, 1000 into that is decide uh, the sodium content of the baby is 190 so decide will be what minus 15 that is 175 so into 175 minus 154 divided this 154 is the sodium content of the ns and 500 minus decide sodium so 500 is the sodium content of the three persons alive 500 minus 175 so we can calculate it to be 175 minus 154 into 1000 that is 21,000 divided by 500 minus 175 that is 325 that is 21,000 divided by 325 64.6 so this 64.6 ml 3 percent saline should be added to 1 liter of the ns okay now so suppose if the child with 10, 10 kg present in shock that we are going to resuscitate 20 ml per kg of the fluid that means 200 ml we are going to give so for 1 liter we have to add what for 1 liter we have to add 64.6 so for 200 ml how much we have to add 64.6 divided by 1000 into 200 hmm. okay now so 64.6 by 5 amount to be 12 ml so for 200 ml we have to add 12 ml of 3 percent sale this is how we have to calculate so this is another equation with the sodium content of 185 so uh, here 1000 decide sodium will be what 170 so 170 for 1 liter we have to add 48.48 ml of 3 percent sale and according to the weight we can calculate okay now this is also the same uh, the ideal bolus this is we have they have taken it as more than um, the 185 only so 2.8 ml they have to give hmm. the next thing we have to do is free water correction what is free water correction so we all know this is the icf this is the ecf in the ecf the total deficit in the total deficit this is free water deficit and solute deficit so total deficit is what total deficit is the dehydration of the body and free water deficit also they have a formula uh, that formula is based on the sodium content the sodium content is more than 170 and less than 170 if it is less than 170 means the 4 ml per kg into pre illness weight into serum sodium minus decided sodium so serum sodium minus decided sodium should not be more than 10, 10 milliequivalent for 24 hours so invariably it will be 10 only so if it is a 10 kg baby means 4 into 10 into 10 that is 400 like that it will be there then uh, to total fluid deficit we have to calculate so that is the amount of the dehydration like we have discussed uh, sorry we are going to discuss so in free water deficit what is what is free water the water free of sodium so uh, suppose if it is a 5% dextrose in 5% dextrose it is 100 ml free water only the 100 ml of the 5% dextrose is contained 100 ml free water if it is an ns of 100 ml it contains no free water it contains solute fluid only if it is half tns means 50 ml free water and 50 ml solute fluid okay now so uh, we have calculated free water deficit and the next thing we have to calculate the solute fluid deficit so uh, what is the solute fluid deficit so free water deficit we have to calculate using the formula so solute fluid deficit we have to calculate this is a total deficit so solute fluid deficit is what total deficit minus free water deficit so how to calculate total deficit so total deficit we will be calculated based upon the dehydration so if there is a one percent dehydration means 10 ml per kg fluid deficit will be there in the total deficit if, if the child is having two percent dehydration means 10 2 into 10 ml per kg 
if the child is having 3 percent dehydration 3 into 10 ml per kg the child's weight is 10 kg means 3 into 10 into 10 that is 300 like this we have to calculate so how to assess the dehydration so for dehydration uh, we can assess using the clinical examination there will be mild moderate and severe so uh, the value the person of dehydration will be different in different children that is infant and older children will be different so uh, if it is a older child mild 3 6 9 that is 3 6 9 percentage for mild moderate severe respectively and for infant 5 10 15 percentage for mild moderate and severe respectively so we can take accordingly so uh, we have calculated the total deficit that is total deficit is calculated using percent of dehydration then we already know the free water deficit the free water deficit is we have calculated using the formula so what will be solute deficit solute deficit will be total deficit minus free water deficit hmm? okay so this is sample calculation how to uh, go about a hypernatremic dehydration if the child so what first thing we have to do is the a total amount of the fluid that is required for the child for 24 hours we have to calculate so what all things will be required there will be maintenance fluid requirement total fluid deficit so maintenance fluid will be calculated using whole day cigar formula if it is 10 kg child 1000 ml if it is a 15 kg child 1250 ml if it is 20 kg child uh, that will be 1500 ml so how to how, how to go about it that is initial 10 kg 100 ml per kg that is 10 into 10 10 into 100 that is 1000 ml if it is 9 kg baby 900 if it is an 8 kg baby 800 like that uh, and next to 10 kg there will be 50 ml per kg so next 10 kg means if the child is having 15 kg means initial 10 kg 10 into 100 that is 100 only 1000 and then for the next uh, 5 kg 50 ml per hour that is 1250 ml and the total fluid deficit so uh, for this child there is 10 percent dehydration so 10 ml per kg for each dehydration 10 ml 10 ml into 15 into each dehydration that is 10 percent dehydration so that amount to be 1500 so we have to add these two things to get what fluid replacement over 24 hours so 1500 plus 1250 all divided by 24 is amount to be 115 ml per hour so this is the fluid that we have to give in 24 hours for a child that is presented with hypernatremic dehydration the next question which fluid we have to give the child is having sodium of 190 we cannot give ns because the ns content will be 154 so uh, we have to calculate which sodium we, which fluid we have to give uh, so for that only there is equation so the thing is free water deficit what is free water deficit it is we already calculated that is um, so fluid that is devoid of sodium then solute fluid deficit solute fluid deficit is what total fluid deficit minus free water deficit so suppose for this child only free water deficit uh, 4 ml per kg into 15 into 10 that is 600 ml Six, 10 means the difference will be invariably 10 only we are going to take if it is a unit according to unit policy in our hospital we used to take 10 if in your hospital you are going to take 8 you can take 8 okay now then solute fluid deficit that is total fluid minus free water total fluid deficit we have calculated according to the person of dehydration in the previous slide that is 1500 so solute fluid will be invariably 900 ml then the next thing we have to do is there are two requirements three things that is maintenance sodium requirement hmm? so uh, one two and three so maintenance fluid will be in maintenance fluid maintenance sodium will be in maintenance fluid so three milliequivalent per hundred ml hmm? of maintenance fluid so here the maintenance fluid is what according to fold the cigar formula we have calculated 1250 so three milliequivalent in 1250 ml per 100 ml that is 38 milliequivalent and the sodium deficit sodium deficit we will calculate in what in the solute deficit so that will be 10 8 to 10 milliequivalent per each ml of solute deficit so maintenance fluid of the sodium will be calculated in maintenance fluid sodium deficit will be calculated in solute fluid deficit okay now so that will be 900 ml is the solute deficit we have already calculated 900 ml so that 900 ml come here so 90 milliequivalent sodium 
So total sodium is what? Main difference plus sodium deficit. 128. Then uh, the very important step that is the sodium required per liter. Hmm? So what is this sodium? This sodium should be in total deficit. Hmm? So total deficit is what? We have already calculated according to the weight uh, percentage of dehydration. It is 1.5 liter. So this total in 1.5 liter that is 85 milliequivalent. So finally we got it. Uh, the fluid content, sodium content of our fluid will be 85. So what we are going to do? We are going to check the which which fluid will be uh, easy. Which fluid will be we can take. So in this we can do sodium, 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 so, 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 so. So this is close to 77. So what fluid we are going to take? Half ms. Like this we have to take. Like this we have to give. And the treatment of dehydration should be uh, if the as per the sodium content of the baby we have to take uh, we have to correct it if it is less than 157 we have to correct over 24 hours if it is between 158 to 170 we have to correct between 48 hours 72 hours if it is between 171 to 193 if it is more than 194 we have to correct over 84 hours like this we have to correct so guys uh, try implementing this idea try doing and try practicing this thing in your ICUs or whenever possible okay bye